So this week we're going to talk about two linear structures, uh, the Q and the DEC. Uh, so a Q, pronounced like the letter Q, is actually from the English word for the weight in line. Um, so you see a simulation here. Here's the end of the line, which is the rear of the Q. And here's the front of the line, and we have a person being serviced. So if you get in a line, just like a normal line, um, if you're the first person in line, you get serviced. If you're the last person in line, you have to wait till everyone else is gone and been serviced until you get serviced. So uh, here's what an actual queue structure looks like. We have a linear structure. You put items onto the structure, and that's called enqueuing. And you remove items off the structure, which is called dequeuing. Uh, other books use different terms. They might use remove and insert, just so you know. Uh, this side of the queue is known as the back of the queue, similar to the back of a line. So you get in the back of the line, and then you have to wait till you get to the front of the line. Uh, there's no way to get in and out of the queue once you're in the line. Um, unlike a real line, you can just decide to give up and leave. That's not allowed in a queue. Uh, so it's not till everyone in front of you, all the items in front of you, have been dequeued and taken off, and you are moved to the front of the line that you can be dequeued. A queue has the uh, nomenclature. It's called first in, first out. So the first person in the line is the first person out of the line. Uh, so FIFO, F-I-F-O, is what this is. A structure is known as a FIFO structure. The most recently atom item in queued has to wait until everything else on the queue is removed from the queue or dequeued before it can be removed. Queues are used in computers a lot. Uh, one example is when you type on your key, there's a keyboard buffer. So if the computer is busy doing something, you can continue typing. It won't miss what you've typed. It puts it into this buffer, and the keys are taken out of the buffer in the same order they were put in, uh, which is one of the essences of a queue. Uh, the print queue is also used on your computer. So if you've ever had a slow printer, uh, maybe it prints photographs, you can uh, ask it to print jobs. And as the printer is busy on that first job, you can ask it to print the second job, a third job, and so on. And it will queue up all those jobs in a line. And so internally as what's called a print queue. Uh, actually scheduling the processes on your computer many times follows a queue. So there's a queue of things waiting to run, and they're given some time to run, and then they're put back on the queue. So each one's given a little time slot. Uh, it's actually more complicated than that, but that's a common way of, uh, a simple way of scheduling processes on a computer. In general, in computing, anytime you're communicating between two entities, they could be two processes on the same uh, computer, they could be two processes on remote computers, uh, and you're passing information. Usually those processes are running at different speeds. So a queue is primarily a place to hold information to accommodate the fact that things are working at different speeds. Uh, so that's used in a lot of places in communication, especially in, in when you start working with moving information over a network, you use buffers and queues. So a buffer is basically like a queue, uh, in that uh, things come in and they go out in the same order they came in. Uh, the ADT we're going to design for Q has this exact uh, list of methods. So it has a constructor, Q, so that's how you create a new Q. So that returns a new object of type Q. We have, once you have an object A, you can in queue an item, which will add an item to the Q. You can ask that the Q dequeue an item which will return the item off of the queue uh, and remove it from the queue. You can check if the queue is empty, so it returns a Boolean true if it is empty. And you can call uh, object.size, which will return how many items are on the queue. So here's the example from the book of running a queue with these uh, methods. So it creates a new queue, it checks is it empty, it returns true. Uh, it enqueues the number four. Uh, they use a, a list internally to represent a queue at this point. Uh, you can enqueue dog. Now you have two things on the queue. You can see that in the list they're using the left side of the list uh, as the back of the queue. Enqueue true. 
So now you have uh, true dog and four, and true is at the back of the queue. You can get the size at this point, it returns three. You can check if is empty, it's going to return false. Now you can enqueue something else, it return, it puts another thing on the queue. And then you can dequeue, it's going to take the first item you put on, which is the four up here. So it removes it from the queue. You can dequeue again, it removes dog. And then you can get the size, and there are two items left on the queue. So it gives you the basic idea of the operations of the queue. Now queues are useful in computer simulation. Uh, we haven't talked about computer simulation. Uh, but computer simulation is a simulation run on a single computer or a network computers to reproduce behavior of a system. Uh, a simulation uses an abstract model, which is a computer model or a mathematical or computational model, to simulate the actual system. <laughs> Simulations are very useful, uh, so we'll talk about that in a little bit. The first simulation is the game of hot potato. You can read about this game in the book. It has kind of a bad origin. But the game of hot potato is you have a people in a circle. Uh, one person starts out with a potato and passes it uh, to, uh, to the next person in time. So it's passed around in times to the left. Uh, then the person with the potato that has it has to leave the circle and uh, before they leave they give it to the person on the left and then you repeat step two so the person hold, now holding the potato has to pass it uh, in people to his left and then whoever's holding that leaves and so on. So go ahead and try out the code in the book. It's pretty simple. I'll, I'll go ahead and show it to you right here. Uh, so you have to again have the Python's library available so you can drag it into your project here. Notice I have mine dragged in as a folder. Uh, you create a brand new queue. And uh, you're going to start uh, with, you have a list of names and the number of times you're going to pass it for this particular game. So they have a list of names as the first parameter. And they're going to pass it seven times on each turn. So this first loop puts everyone in the queue. So for everyone, for every name on the list, it enqueues that. So now you're going to have everyone in the queue represented. Now why, while the queue has a person in the list, uh, what it's going to do to simulate is for the range from 1 to n, it's going to uh, dequeue a person and then enqueue them. So it's basically moving around the, the uh, everyone in the queue. So if, if, it's, if n were 3, it would DQ Brad, Kent, and Jane, and then uh, and it would also put them on the other end. So it's moving people through the list. So it's after, after it's DQ'd three people, Susan will be the person on the far right. So what once this loop is done in times, it DQs Susan, and she's the one removed forever from the queue. So she's being removed from the circle. And so uh, then it goes up and says, well, we're not done because there's more than one person, so it's going to go through the same process again. So the simulation is just these four uh, lines of code here, including the blank line, simulates the entire hot potato game. Uh, of course, there's some setup. you got to put everyone in the queue in the first place. And when you're all done, you DQ the last person, and she's the winner or, or the last person out, however you want to do it. So it just returns that. So when you run it, it says Susan is the winner of the game. So a pretty simple lab uh, uh, simulation.